Let's talk about media bias. Almost two weeks ago, a Syrian refugee in Germany pledged allegiance to ISIS and blew himself up in a suicide attack outside a music festival. What was the headline at Reuters? Syrian man denied asylum killed in German blast. Killed in German blast? If you were going by the headline, you'd think to yourself, that poor man. First he was denied asylum, and then he was killed by one of those nefarious German blasts. The BBC was no better. The headline read, Syrian migrant dies in German blast. Better steer clear of those German blasts. Let's compare these headlines, which go out of their way to avoid associating any sort of violence with Muslims, with an MSN headline for an article in The Guardian. Muslim refugees forced to convert? My goodness, Muslim refugees are being forced to convert? Probably Christians forcing these Muslim refugees to convert to Christianity. So we click on the article and suddenly the headline changes. Aid workers accused of trying to convert Muslim refugees at Greek camp. That's odd. The other headline said that Muslims were being forced to convert, presumably at gunpoint. This headline says that aid workers are accused, like it's some sort of crime, of trying to convert Muslim refugees. We need to get to the bottom of this dastardly deed. Christians working in Greece's most notorious asylum detention center have tried to convert some of the Muslim detainees who have been held under the terms of the EU-Turkey migration deal. On at least two occasions in recent months, aid workers have distributed conversion forms inside copies of Arabic versions of the St. John's Gospel to people held at Moria detention camp on Lesbos. The forms, seen by The Guardian, invite asylum seekers to sign a statement declaring the following, I know I'm a sinner. I ask Jesus to forgive my sins and grant me eternal life. My desire is to love and obey his word. Wait, some Christians handed out copies of the Gospel of John in Arabic, and if you read the Gospel and believed what you read, there was a form inside that you could sign saying, I know I'm a sinner. I ask Jesus to forgive me my sins and grant me eternal life. That's what MSN.com considers forcing Muslims to convert? By the way, I've passed out the exact same translation of the Gospel of John. That's what we were passing out when this happened in Dearborn, Michigan. Look at this. They weren't here three minutes. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Surely there must be more to this story. Muslim asylum seekers who received the booklet said they found the aid worker's intervention insensitive. It's a big problem because a lot of the people are Muslim and they have a problem with changing their religion, said Muhammad, a detainee from Damascus. They were trying this during Ramadan, the holiest Muslim month. A second Syrian, Ahmed, said, We like all religions, but if you are a Christian and I give you a Quran, how would you feel? Let me get this straight. These guys fled Syria because jihadis are blowing them up. They want to come to the West for a better life, and they're complaining because someone handed them a copy of the Gospel of John? One of them asks, If you're a Christian and I give you a Quran, how would you feel? I have several copies of the Quran that were given to me by Muslims. The first copy of the Quran I ever had was given to me by a Muslim. If you believe in the Quran and you believe in Surah 16 verse 125, which commands you to invite everyone to Islam, why wouldn't you give me a copy of the Quran? Wouldn't this situation with the Christian aid workers be an excellent opportunity to explain to the arriving Muslims that things are different here in the West, that Christians are free to tell them about Christianity, and that Muslims are free to tell Christians? about Islam? Seems like the perfect time to talk about freedom of religion in the West. But let's see what happens. Detainees alleged that the forms were distributed by at least two representatives. Two representatives? Two representatives of Euro Relief, a Greek charity that became the largest aid group active in Moria after other aid organizations pulled out in protest against the EU-Turkey deal. 
The camp is overseen by the Greek Migration Ministry, but aid groups perform most of the day-to-day -day management. So, two Christians handed copies of the Gospel of John to Muslims on two occasions, and this is international news, with headlines claiming that Christians are forcing Muslims to convert? And how did officials react? By standing up for Western freedoms? No, by enforcing Sharia. Euro Relief said it disapproved of the distribution of conversion materials, but added it could not rule out the possibility that individual aid workers had distributed the booklets themselves. Euro Relief's director, Stefana Samiotakis, said, I have already taken action so that our volunteers know very well that they should not distribute any kind of literature. Our code of conduct says clearly that this is something they simply cannot do, and if somebody does, we are going as an organization to take disciplinary actions. Well, good thing Euro Relief is cracking down on volunteers who are volunteering their time to help Muslim refugees. How dare these Christians think that these Muslims, who come from an area where Muslims are blowing each other up like it's a sport, might want to start examining alternatives to Islam. How dare they give out free copies of the Gospel of John, which Muslims are free to reject if they don't want to read them. How dare these Christians treat Muslims like they're human beings capable of independent thought. Haven't these Christians read the guidelines affirmed by politicians and the media declaring that Muslims are subhuman animals who can't learn anything beyond what their leaders have brainwashed them to believe and that they should never be given the chance to think for themselves? Thank you, MSN, for reporting these forced conversions and for showing the world your true contempt for both Christians and Muslims.